Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great hump day as we get ready to finish off the finish him the NFL season. Hopefully, you finish it off on a great note against the Commanders. We will be there tailgating at FedEx Field. In fact, I'll be going back home and getting working on getting every Thing together for just that. I can't wait for Sunday. It's going to be chilly. Uh, we're going to be seeing a bunch of you great fans and things out there, and I can't wait to get it all going on. Um, I want to because, you know, I, I keep hearing from Eagle fans and people like that. Here's, here's the problem in life. What happens is people hear the initial report or the initial emotion, but then when it's corrected or the real story comes out, nobody seems to get that. You know, like when a newspaper it used to be in the day, back in the day, when a newspaper would make a mistake that was front page news, when it was corrected, it wasn't on the front page. It was way back in there deep. And so the perception is kept. For example, when people heard that there was a tape, when Mike Ferrello, one guy, one guy said, there might be a tape, and when you say might, that means it could or couldn't be. There might be a tape of Des Bryant out there that's 10 times worse than Ray Rice. Well, you could say that about anybody. There might be. There's plausible deniability. If there's not, well, I said it might be, might not be. But the perception was and started off a whole cascade of everybody looking and condemning Des Bryant for being in a, you know, an abuser. That didn't exist to this day. Nobody ever apologized for it. But still, some people will think that Des Bryant was guilty of that because of the initial report. And here's where now the perception is that the Dallas Cowboys got lucky and the referees are paid off. And by, mind you, I'm not in the position to or the desire to defend the officials because I keep constantly seeing Micah Parsons, you know, hands to the face and, you know, being roped and, you know, being pulled from behind and, you know, guys on his back that's like literally get a room. Um, so, you know, they miss stuff all the time. But now the Cowboys, everybody's looking and saying the Dallas Cowboys, they shouldn't have won that game. The NFL is looking into it, <clears throat> and they're thinking about giving the two points to, to the Lions, which is bullshit. I don't know where anybody got that idea that the NFL uh, retroactively was going to correct things because they've never done that before. Never. So I don't even know where people even got that idea from. So yesterday... The NFL basically put out there the exact rules. They put out a videotape of what would happen. And see, here's the thing. In football, you're always looking for an advantage. It used to be that you would hear about, like, the Raiders, when they knew they were going to be facing speedy receivers, they would wet down the field on the sidelines so it was slippery. You know, you, you would do things to make things more advantageous for you. You used to hear about uh, the Colts used to pipe in extra sound to make it louder. They would reverberate the, the using the PA system, the crowd noise, to make it harder for other teams. You do, well, Bill Belichick, you know, uh, Spygate and all that. You do things to try and get yourself an advantage because the difference between winning and losing in any game usually can be three or four plays, and I don't care if that's a blowout or not. I don't care if it's a blowout or not. It's usually a couple plays that are the difference between winning and losing. And so Dan, uh, Dan, um, Dan, their coach knew this was a way we can get an advantage. Basically, we can be deceptive. We can keep having this guy report, even though we're not going to throw to him. We're going to allow you to sleep on this thing. And they, it, it's not like they didn't know the rules because you saw him. Number 70, report. Now, and we're going to watch the video real quick. But what you have to do is you have to pat your belly and raise your hand. Each play that you are eligible. You don't report and say, I'm eligible for the whole game. Each play, because the official has to notify the defense that you are an eligible receiver. Okay? And here's the thing. You can only have one of those per play. So let's listen to the NFL's official tape 
and the explanation from them. As a reminder to clubs and players, an offensive player numbered 50. Okay, I'm, I'm going to back this up for a second. Watch 70 when he goes on the field. You see him raise his hand and pat his belly, okay? Because this is what he was doing all game long, okay? He did it correctly all these times, right? Listen to it again. As a reminder to clubs and players, an offensive player numbered 50 through 79 or 90 through 99 is permitted to up. line up as an eligible pass receiver. You see that, right? He made, he ran through the crowd and said, hey, official, I'm here, I'm eligible. And the official turns around and he goes through and tells the defense. To okay. allow the defense an opportunity to match personnel. Now, to watch, a, now look, look, look right now. This is the play. Do you see him right here with his hand up? He's got his hand up, and he's patting his belly. He's running onto the field, patting his belly, and raising his hand. Boy, deception. You see? And to ensure fairness, the player must immediately... Re so the official sees, okay, well, 70 has been doing it the whole time. Report the change in his... Did you see 68 do the same thing? Because if he did, you, you can't have two guys report. You can't have two guys report. Clearly, number 70, and I know people are going to conspiracy theorists out here are going to say, oh, well, that's a Dr. Tate. Man, get out of here with the crap. What the Lions were doing is they were trying to slip in a fast one. They were trying to slip in a fast one here and hope that nobody noticed the difference. Okay? Because what? Eligibility okay. status to so the So the official did what he was supposed to do. Number 70, clearly... He ran on the field, raised his hand, patted on his belly. Hey, 68 walks over to him. Maybe 68 said, I'm eligible. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. But the two problems are you can't have two guys eligible on the same play. And you already had one guy do it first. And you, as the second guy, did not raise your hand did not pat your belly. Now, you could have changed that and let them know. Okay, no, my bad. I've, I've been doing it all game, ref. But they didn't do any of that. They didn't do any of that. Free, who will inform the defensive team and will make an announcement to the stadium before that play. It is the responsibility of the player to be sure that change in... It is the responsibility of the player to make sure that that change is known. It's not on the official. It's on the player and the team to make sure that they know, the official knows, and notifies the defense. In status is clearly communicated. Again, watch. You, you see him run out on the field. Be sure that change in Look status out. is clearly communicated the to the referee by both a physical signal with his hands the other two guys up and down in front over. of his chest no and to report to the referee his intention to report as an eligible receiver. Any player reporting as eligible must line up initially and remain in an eligible position. Failure to do so, or if he is covered up by another player, will result in an illegal formation. So... Illegal formation because 70 is eligible and he's not in an eligible position. Now, again, if they had notified him that 68, it would have been okay there. Should the reporting player elect to remain in the game for an additional play, he must repeat the same reporting process to the referee. Okay. So, I know people will still say, they were robbed. They were robbed, man. The Cowboys cheated. They paid off the refs. No. The letter of the law. That, it wasn't like they just made that up. The Lions knew how you have to report. Raise your hand. Pat your belly. Doesn't mean it's time for lunch. 
Doesn't mean I'm hungry. That means I am an eligible receiver. And clearly, 70 ran onto the field doing the signals of being an eligible receiver. One more point. This was actually at the end of the game. And I was in such a shock, I didn't even hear this part of it. But let's listen to Troy and crew. Can you watch the tape? Dan, Dan Skipper comes in, but Taylor Decker also walks over to the official, and you only do that if you're telling the official you're reporting as an eligible. And so I don't know if, if, if he just didn't hear that or what. They said that only Dan Skipper reported, but the evidence is, is on the tape. So it's hard for, you know, initially I thought, well, maybe he didn't report because he's already in the game, but hard to believe that he didn't. Here, here is the call that was made after the flags were thrown. What else could it be? Touching by number 68. So the call is. So there, I mean, that's it right there. You heard illegal touch. There you have it. Um, he clearly did not report the way you were supposed to report. So, you know, I know that it'll go. If you're a Detroit Lion fan, you feel like we've been robbed. I know, like, my man Glover Quinn, he went off and saying that this is all bullshit. And, you know, the talking heads, the Ryan Clarks and everything else all went through this thing and swore that, you know, they got robbed. It was a perfect play. It wasn't a perfect play. If, if you had done it correctly, the thing was on this was, you were trying to deceive. I'm not going to say cheat. Some people could say you're trying to cheat. You were trying to deceive the Cowboys into thinking that 70 was when 68 was. Close, but no cigar. Hopefully that ends up ending this controversy where the Cowboys don't deserve to, to have the opportunity for the number two seed and the Cowboys played off the refs. No, that, that call was right. Now, did they miss a whole lot of other calls? Hell, yes, they did. But, you know, you can only deal with what you can deal with. All right, good people. Hope you all are having a wonderful day. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I'm going to get some work done, and then I'm going to get up the road so we can get, get ready to get our barbecue on. Peace.